as you sit here, any thoughts with regard to the world, just put them aside. You're just here, you with your breath. And the breath surrounds you. We usually talk about watching the breath. It gives the unfortunate impression that you're in one part of the body, watching the breath in another part of the body. The verb should be allow yourself to be bathed by the breath. The breath is all around you. As you breathe in, as you breathe out. Think it coming in from all directions, going out all directions. And that helps to loosen up a lot of the tension inside. We go through life carrying a lot of tension around with us, both in terms of physical tension and tension of certain thoughts, ideas that we hold on to. That can cause a lot of suffering if we're not careful. So it's good to loosen them up, shake them out, clean things out inside. Think of the breath sweeping through the body. The patterns of tension are like little cobwebs that you sweep away. And then just learn how to try to maintain that. And even as you leave the meditation, it can still be there. We close our eyes as we meditate so we can focus a lot of attention on this. But that doesn't mean that when we open our eyes, it just disappears. This part of awareness can still be there. The problem is we tend to blot it out, push it off into a corner. Like the grasshopper I was given when I was studying biology in high school, we had to dissect grasshoppers, find out where all the organs were. Well, it turned out my grasshopper was a female with, and her body was full of eggs, and all of her organs were just pushed off to a little tiny corner of her body. It's no wonder she died after she gave birth. In the same way, our awareness of our body tends to get pushed out, especially if we're spending a lot of time with our screens. So try to reestablish this awareness. Let it fill your body, let it fill your field of attention, and then try to maintain that as you go through the day. After all, we are cleaning out the mind. So don't let the way you engage with your senses as you go through the day clutter it up again. We talk about restraint of the senses, and a lot of people don't like that idea. I think it sounds like we're putting blinders on our eyes, putting earplugs in our ears. It's not the case. We can still see, we can still listen. The question is, what inside the mind is doing the seeing and what's doing the listening? The Buddha compares it to animals. We've got six different animals here, and they're all running off in different directions. So we're not simply on the passive receiving side of things. We're out there actively looking for something, looking for a sense of ease, a sense of well-being, something interesting outside. But it says you need to have mindfulness established in the body, immersed in the body, to withstand the pull of those animals. The image she gives is of taking six different animals and tying them up with leashes. And if you don't have a post to tie the leashes to, the animals will push and pull one another. Whichever animal is the strongest will pull all the others with it. But if you have a post and you tie the leashes to a post, then push and pull as they might, they're going to end up just lying down next to the post. So mindfulness immersed in the body, that's your post here. Try to establish that as you look at things and listen to things, engage with all your senses. Now we don't clutter up the mind. You don't give strength, you don't exercise your greed, aversion, and delusion. You exercise some control over them. When you do that in the course of the day, then it's a lot easier to do it as you're meditating as well.